on this COVID-19 media briefing. My name is Noraida Negron, Communication Administrator for the City of Laredo. Today, we have a lot of information for our community on what's happening with the virus here in our community. And we have a lot of people joining us who, who, uh, who will be also giving us some um, information to our media and our community, very important information. So with that, let's begin with our Emergency Management Coordinator and Laredo Fire Chief, Mr. Guillermo Hurd. Good morning to everybody. Uh, Apologize for the delay, but we had a stakeholder meeting that we restarted again, and there was a lot of valuable information uh, shared within the stakeholders. This is uh, in ver the most important operational meeting we have within the city uh, with the schools, the hospitals, the shelters, our federal partners, law enforcement, city, county, and this is to help plan um, what we are currently right now. Uh, I, we do know that we've always had this media briefings and this meetings and as the numbers increased in the winter months and then subsequently decreased because we come back, banded together like a community and we went from highest hospitalization rate to highest vaccination rate, which is a good positive. That is thanks to all the community here. Uh, but now we are faced uh, with a different situation. Um, even though that we are the highest vaccination rate in our community, we are seeing that percentage of unvaccinated is, is having, unfortunately, they are getting sick and I'm so, unfortunately, some of, the, some of them are passing away. Uh, our hospital system uh, during the winter months did have between 400 and 500 healthcare providers between all three assisting them. Um, that assistance that we've asked for from the state uh, was officially denied on Friday. Uh, we have been asking multiple times for assistance and for them to expand, but uh, in or in uh, accordance with the last governor's orders, uh, number 39, uh, they did get an official response and also the EOC here in the city of uh, denying the request. Uh, currently, the, hosp the our hospitalized uh, patients in the beginning of July were in the low tens, and subsequently, as of today, we've had the highest number in the 50s. And unfortunately, half of those are in the intensive care unit. That means uh, that means their severity of illness has increased. Uh, we, we've been talking to the hospitals, trying to strategize on how to assist. But ultimately, one of the key is, and we'll continue pushing out that message, is vaccine, vaccinate. We've, we've tried to do more targeted response. But if you do know somebody out there that hasn't gotten vaccinated, please spread the word. Help us. We have multiple, multiple sites to help vaccinated. Um, we uh, we are also working with our border patrol uh, partners, our, our CBP partners, and, and also our, our uh, shelters in order for us to also uh, work on the current migrant situation that is seen throughout the border communities too. So we are diligently working on that. We do report that to our mayor or council, and we are starting the media briefings regularly to report this to the community because it is important for all for you all to know. Also, there's a lot of unknowns, no unknowns coming to uh, with the next couple of weeks where we have the private schools and the public schools opening. And I thank I thank all the partners here for for them to give a direct report from them, which is good. So we can share and you can see how in the background we communicate and we work together. I know you're going to hear from our health authority and Richard, but the De what we know about the Delta variant last week is different from this week. It changes all every week and there's new guidance coming from the CDC. So I will ask again before I send it to somebody else is please mask up in indoor activities right now. If you can mask up, please mask, mask up vaccinated or unvaccinated. What we can do makes a huge difference. That's the end of my report. Right. Thank you, Chief Heard, for that. And, and as you mentioned, we do have other, you know, uh, partners that are here with us this morning. And I would like to um, call upon our, the CEO of Loreto Medical Center, Mr. Jorge Leal, to give a report as well. Thank you, Noraida. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Um, as Chief Heard mentioned, the rise in the number of COVID-19 cases has made an increase in severity and has had a huge impact in Laredo Medical Center. Our inpatient beds uh, that are available at the hospital, including those that are reserved for COVID patients, vary every day based on availability of staffing and also the patients that are admitted and discharged. As you all are very aware, uh, we did have a huge um, out migration of staff during the 
during the pandemic that hit us on the second wave that we had at the beginning of the year. And the help of the state uh, was significant for us. At, at one point, Laredo Medical Center did have 149 COVID patients in-house. Currently, it's 34. So busy, but in a different way due to the fact that we continue to take care of everything else. Our emergency room is prepared to take care of all patients who need medical care and attention. And we encourage anybody experiencing a medical emergency to not delay care because that's the worst thing that you can do as your prognosis will get worse. For those who have tested co positive for COVID, we it meets certain criteria. Both of our emergency rooms uh, here at main campus in North Central are giving the outpatient uh, uh, outpatient treatments when it comes for infusion therapy. So we're using every single tool in our arsenal to be able to fight this pandemic. I would also say for uh, people that are experiencing mild COVID-19 symptoms to please reach out to your physician and do not delay care, which is uh, what I really want to stress on. Uh, it is important that you take these precautions and make sure that you don't spread this Delta variant even more. Uh, we, have, we have seen studies where this is uh, two or three times more contagious than the previous variant, and we want to make sure that we stop it. We continue uh, to require masks uh, for all of our caregivers, patients, and visitors who come to our hospital, and, our, and I encourage everybody to look at our website uh, to look at the, the latest guidelines. Finally, I would like to stress to everybody what Chief Hurd mentioned. Uh, we are a very highly vaccinated community, but we are still have some room to go. Our hospital has also a very high rate of, uh, of vaccination within our staff, and this will help us stop the spread of the virus. If you're experiencing any symptoms of COVID-19, stay home, mask up, and please seek the appropriate care because we need to work together more than ever because our ecosystem is at a tipping point and we need to make sure that we can take care of every single person that is walking in through our doors, be it LMC or doctor's hospital. Uh, we work together as a community to make sure uh, that we're here for all Laredoans and all the communities that are around us. Uh, and that's the end of my report, Chief. And if I need to do it in Spanish, let me know too. So thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Leal. If you could do it in Spanish, and I also encourage others, that, uh, I know this is new to everyone um, being part of our media briefing, but if you could, we do have um, media that it is Spanish speaking media and they would like for also, if you can, of course, um, do it in Spanish as well. Thank you. I think my people know what I will get upset if I didn't say it right. So if I was born and raised over there, so I'll go ahead. And buenos días, Jorge Ernesto Leal, CEO aquí de Laredo Medical Center. Gracias por darme la oportunidad de hablar hoy. El aumento de casos del COVID-19 ha aumentado la gravedad en el impacto que tenemos en la Red Medical Center y nuestra capacidad como hospital. La, la cantidad de camas que son disponibles, ah, incluido las que son reservadas para COVID-19, varía según la disponibilidad del personal y la admisión y alta de los pacientes que están aquí en el hospital. Esta situación es fluida y cambia de día a día. Es importante recordar que la Redo Medical Center en un momento tuvo 149 pacientes positivos de COVID. Al momento tenemos 34. Y aunque el número no suena muy grande, tenemos que recordar que también tuvimos mucho staff que se fue durante la pandemia. A, a otros trabajos retiraron o salieron, o salieron de, del campo del que estaban. Muy difícil la situación mientras man, manejamos esto. Nuestra sala de emergencia está preparada para atender a todos los pacientes que necesitan atención médica y alentamos a cualquier persona que experimente cualquier emergencia que no demoren su trato, porque cuando no buscan atención in, en médica de inmediato pueden tener una situación peor de lo que tienen. Para aquellos que tienen el COVID-19 y tienen ciertos requerimientos, podemos tratarlos uh, con antibióticos y infusiones en nuestros cuartos de emergencia, ya aquí en el cuarto en, en LMC Main o en LMC North Central. Es muy importante que podamos hacer eso. También para la gente que tiene COVID-19, pero son, sin, son, pero son síntomas que no sean tan graves, pueden, tra por favor, trabajar con su doctor y si no tienen doctor, buscar a alguien que, los, que nos pueda ayudar para poder seguir las precauciones y bajar la, trans o sea, la, la transmisión del, de la variante Delta. LMC sigue requiriendo todas las mascarillas, 
y todo el equipo necesario para proteger a nuestros pacientes, a nuestros médicos y a toda la gente que visita aquí a LMC. El hospital tiene todas las cosas temporales en nuestro website, en uh, nuestro sitio web, perdón, para que puedan ver eh, todas las actualizaciones que tenemos día a día, porque como dijo el, el, el Chief Hurd, esto cambia de una semana a la otra, día a día, la transmisión, todo para nosotros. Y quiero nada más terminar diciendo que, por favor, si no se han vacunado o conocen a alguien que no se ha vacunado, por favor, hablen con ellos para vacunarse. Es importantísimo ahorita, en este momento que estamos, uh, estamos viendo un precipicio y no queremos seguir esto. Queremos poder estar aquí fuertes para nuestra comunidad. Nosotros, como el Hospital de los Doctores de Laredo, Uh, para estar cerca y estar siempre cuidando nuestra comunidad y no llegar a un momento que sea crítico y no podamos tener el cuidado adecuado de nuestros pacientes. Así que, por favor, uh, aliento a toda la comunidad de Laredo que se vayan a vacunar uh, para poder salir de esta cuarta pandemia que estamos ahorita con, con la variante Delta. Muchas gracias, Noraida. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Leal, for, for that report. Now, we would like to also call upon the CEO for Doctors Hospital, Ms. Emma Montes Ewing. Thank you and good morning. Uh, my name is Emma Montes Ewing, and I have been here uh, almost a year now. So, a year uh, in about eight days, and I am very uh, thankful to be a part of uh, Laredo. And as we transform healthcare and also respond to this pandemic, So from our uh, side, I want to tell you, we are working with our partner LMC as we continue to take care of our community. Uh, we have seen an increase in COVID cases. When I arrived here about a year ago, we had a uh, hundred and ten patients in our in our hospital that were COVID positive. Today we are at 19 and about half of those are in the ICU. So we have definitely seen that increase in COVID cases, um, but particularly in those patients that have not been vaccinated. Um, some of those patients, when you look at the data, they are younger patients. So we continue to monitor and strictly follow our CDC and local healthcare department guidelines. Uh, from the inception of COVID, we implemented uh, And that included uh, requiring masks. Um, now that we go into this next phase, we continue to educate and connect the dots for our visitors and patients because we still see that even after everything we have gone through, there is a resistance from our community to, to want to wear the mask upon entering the hospital. And our focus, uh, very much like Jorge uh, mentioned, is to keep everybody safe and continue to take care of our community, of our patients. So um, we, we deal with angry uh, visitors that don't understand that the challenge and, and so makes the job a little more difficult. So I uh, believe that we need to continue educating. Right now, visitation for us is limited, uh, especially for those areas. Um, actually, we don't have any visitation for the COVID areas. This is all so we can keep uh, our patients and staff Uh, and community safe, we strongly encourage our employees to get vaccinated. We're not mandating vaccination at this point. We're strongly encouraging and our percentage inside our facility is extremely high. We continue to vaccinate because we want to reach uh, close to 100%. Um, so we continue to offer vaccinations. Our staff has been provided with the appropriate PPE. And uh, just a little side note, uh, my background is uh, clinical. I used to be a, a board certified wound care specialist. And I can tell you that what we call PPE, personal protection equipment, is key in protecting ourselves. Uh, today we deal with COVID. In the past, we have dealt with several different types of bacteria uh, and viruses that, that are uh, extremely dangerous. And what is, has been one of the things that has kept us safe Um, is the PPE. So we believe strongly in that. Uh, DHL, as our other uh, healthcare facilities, we're facing staffing challenges, very similar to what has been mentioned today. Um, and we are thinking outside of the box on how to do we redesign healthcare as we look into 2022 and, and beyond. 
Um, we have open positions, we have posted, we encourage qualified candidates to apply. Uh, we particularly need nurses to come join our DHA family. We have an amazing culture uh, committed to patient care. Uh, once again, we're seeing benefits from vaccination. I cannot stress that enough. We encourage the public uh, that is over 12 years old to get vaccinated. Unless, of course, you have a health uh, care condition that precludes you from doing that, it's always a good idea to contact your personal physician. Um, I strongly believe that uh, we together must do our part as we go through this pandemic. This will pass, but today is where we get to uh, bring strong leadership, collaboration, communication, and continue to build those relationships. Thank you very much. At this point, if you would like me to, I can do it in Spanish. Yes, please. So, muy buenos días. Mi nombre es Emma Montes uh, Ewing y soy la ejecutiva del hospital de doctores uh, aquí de Laredo. Y he estado aquí en esta comunidad hermosa aproximadamente un año. Ya eh, me faltan algunos días y este año ha pasado increíblemente rápido, pero me siento bastante orgullosa y bendecida de ser parte de esta comunidad y de trabajar mano a mano con todas las personas que estamos aquí en esta llamada y las personas también que nos escuchan. 